Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. I also should say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, we're right on top of it, aren't we? <laughs> this is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and if you're watching on, at home on uh, Facebook, we're glad to have you. Uh, please uh, look at your, uh, uh, on the Peace website, you can find the uh, service for today, the fourth Sunday in Advent, uh, December 20. Uh, here in, in house, we have a, a bell quartet this morning. It's got Sue Stanko, Becky Ritz, Becky Maurer, and Lori Maurer, and it's conducted by Carol Emley, which is kind of an unusual situation. Um, they've had some, some COVID in the, in the bell choir, and they've been trying to find the right combination. Uh, our elder this morning is Dale Caffey. Uh, Carol is also playing the organ this morning. Uh, we have drive through communion beginning at... Uh, 10, uh, 15. So we'll have um, Bible class from 9.45 to 10.15 and then drive through communion from 10.15 to 10.45. Oh, okay. Um, then also um, on Thursday night, it was Christmas Eve, we have two services, uh, one at 5.30 and one at 7.30. We will be sitting uh, socially distant as we've been doing now for a number of months. Uh, it's first come, first served. So, you know, whoever gets here first gets the seats, I guess. Uh, we have 70, it's a pretty hard number downstairs. Uh, and then there's some room upstairs for the musicians, but it's really only 70 people at each service. Friday, Christmas Day, we have a service at 10 a.m. That service will have communion at it. Again, um, uh, 70 folks. We hope to stream the 5.30 service on uh, Christmas Eve and have it available uh, uh, as we have been doing for some time. Also, I was reminded that Catriel Euler is here. She's going to play a piano solo a little later in the service. Would you please uh, stand and greet one another and we'll sing Savior of the Nations Come. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. So called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Advent is a time to bind up the brokenhearted. For past wrongs that prevent us from moving forward. For any bitterness that scratches our souls. For relationships left in decay and neglect. For any action that has wounded us or by which we have wounded others. Today we light four candles. The first candle is the light of hope for those in time of waiting. The second candle is the light of hope for those who are wearied by the circumstances of life. The third candle is the light of hope for those eagerly watching for God's promised glory. And the fourth candle is the light of hope for those who carry the wounds of life. Today we confess our pain and the pain we have caused others. As the light shines, we turn to the Savior who came to rescue the lost, to help the hurting, and to bind up the broken. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For the peace of above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. And help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter. Now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to, my sh to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Dale. the 16th chapter. Dale, we have a oh, piano. Pardon.
The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to both of our musical uh, uh, groups this morning. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And Behold, you will conceive in your womb, and will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who has been called, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Would the children please come forward? Uh, 
Hello? Okay. We have a microphone. We're going to wait for Caitlin. She's on her way. <laughs> Okay, so I have a list of words that I want you to find something in common with. So we have darkness, we have snakes, we have spiders, and thunder. What can you think of? Nothing? So we have darkness, like the dark, um, spiders, snakes, and thunder. Those are common things that people might be afraid of. Like, I know I have a fear of birds. Fun fact. Yeah. It's a little weird, but... <laughs> Various storms, see, storms like thunder, that can be scary. So the story that I was going to talk to you about was there's this girl named Mary, and she was going to get married to her husband Joseph, and then all of a sudden, an angel came and appeared to her. And the first thing that the angel said was, do not be afraid. I mean, angels can actually be pretty scary. But this angel was going to tell her that she was going to have a son. And Mary must have been thinking, how is this possible? But she was favored by God. And she was going to trust in God. And our fears might come and go. But God will always be there with us. Not only to help us not to be afraid, but to trust in him. Because just as Mary did whenever she heard that great news about her son, do you know what her, who her son was? Yes. And Jesus will always be with us as we come and go from here. And yeah. Um, let's fold our hands and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who came into this world and gave us life and joy and peace. In your holy and precious name, amen. You may head back to yours.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is drawn from the Gospel reading in Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Today is a tale of two builders. The first builder was the builder David, the great king, who, as in the Old Testament lesson notes, decided one day, since he lived in a house of cedar, cedar that had to be imported, by the way, a quite a distance to Jerusalem, he thought that since he lived in that, and since the Ark of the Covenant was still in a tent, he should build a temple for the Lord. I'm sure he got to thinking about, well, what would he need? Well, more cedar, most likely. But most of the construction would have been made out of stone, masonry, probably quarried right there at the base of the hill. There are still quarry areas of, uh, you can see at the base of the hill. He had to purchase the hill first. It was a place where he had prayed to God to stop a plague. And he had bought it for a grand sum of 50 shekels. Not a very large amount of money. 50 days wages for one worker. And then he has to gather all of the various things, including cedar, but also stone and stonemasons and carpenters and people to work with metal of various types. He says, it's recorded in 1 Chronicles 29, that he gathered together gold and silver and copper and bronze, all for various vessels, various things that would be used in this temple. And somewhere along the way, he got to thinking, you know, I probably ought to ask God. So he brings in Nathan the prophet. Now, he's had dealings with Nathan before. Nathan has been the one that has reminded him on one occasion that he was the man. You are the man, he had said to him when when, uh, David had sinned with Bathsheba. And so he brings Nathan in, and I assume thinks that Nathan has the answer. So when he asks Nathan, is it all right? Can I go ahead and do this? Would this be appropriate? Nathan says, oh, yeah, the Lord's with you. Go ahead and do it. I wonder what Nathan felt the next day when he had to go back with egg on his face and say, oh, by the way, the Lord visited me last night, and he said, I didn't ask you to do this. In fact, I never asked anybody to do this. I've had plenty of opportunity to ask people to do this. And no, at no time have I done that. So what are you thinking, David? Who told you to do this? And he goes on to say, um, I took you from the pasture, from following my sheep, that you would be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off your enemies from before you. I will make your name great like the, name, like the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. I, I took you from being a shepherd. I made you to be the leader of this nation. I've established that nation. I've even said that your name is going to be like one of the greats that will always be remembered. And he is, truly, always been remembered. So what do you need to build this for is the implication. What do you need to do this? I will, I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. I'm going to make a house. I don't need you to make a house. I want to make a house. And your house and your kingdom will be made forever before me. 
Your throne shall be established forever. I deliberately, when I printed this in the bulletin, changed the way the layout was so that that sentence would stand out. Should have been in the previous paragraph. And your house and your kingdom shall be forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The house I'm going to make is not like the house you want to make. Your house will be established forever. And then there's another builder. This one's just mentioned in passing here in Luke chapter 1, but will be mentioned more in Matthew chapter 1. In passing, he's mentioned that he is betrothed, Mary is betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. A builder. A builder. I, you may know that one of the things that happened during the betrothal period, between the time the fathers got together and made the contract that said that the husband, the husband and wife were to be married, and the time they actually got married was a period of time. And what they did in that time was a number of things, but the most significant was they had to make a room for the bride in the groom's household. She got to go, when she moved into the groom's household, which was kind of like a, a small compound, would have a number of uh, generations living there, she got her own room. Now she shared the courtyard in the middle, and she shared a lot of other things with these in-laws, but she was guaranteed one room that was hers. Jesus even makes reference to this when he says, I'm going to my father's house and prepare a place for you. It's in John 14. And where I'm going, I'm going to come and bring you back. It was, an, it was the, one of the gifts that was given to the bride, her own space. And I can just see Joseph meeting with Mary before they got married and saying, okay, you want uh, open concept, uh, shiplap, uh, white uh, cabinet were, you know, right? And he's probably been busy working on all of that, trying to get that together. So she got what she wants. But the Lord is building a different house. The Lord is not concerned about the house that Joseph lives in. Joseph, he's concerned about the house that Joseph is in. The house and lineage of David. He's concerned that Mary, who's also of the house and lineage of David, would marry someone of the house and lineage of David so that what the angel will say here shortly after that opening statement would be true and would help to establish what God had long promised. Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. The Lord God sends Gabriel to, to make sure that they understand it's not about the, the dwelling they're going to live in, it's about the house of David. The kingdom of God coming to this young woman. How can this be, she says, since I am a virgin? And the angel answers her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. This is a lot bigger than any building, whether it be the temple, which was very important, of course, of course, over the years, and Solomon, David's son, would build it and it'd be rebuilt and all sorts of things. Herod would, 
work on it throughout his life, still being worked on at the time of Jesus. Well, that's an important building. That's not the most important thing. It is, as Jesus will later say of himself, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it again. And John quietly puts in parentheses, and the temple he was talking about was his body. The, stab, the, te- the, the house that the Lord is building is bigger than any building. The house that the Lord is building is bigger than any furnishings in that building. The house that the Lord was building was the kingdom of heaven on earth in the form of the king. Long promised, long expected, now delivered. Now present. Now there. And nothing, as the angel says to uh, uh, Mary, is true. Nothing is impossible for God. I'm sure, I'm sure those words must have resonated through her head for a long time. Throughout her pregnancy, throughout the birth of Jesus, throughout those years of raising him, throughout the years of watching him grow and most likely becoming a builder himself, at least until he began his ministry. It must have resonated in her mind when he goes out and begins his ministry and goes from place to place and she says to him, first of all, you know, they don't have any wine. Uh, Do something about it. And he says to her, in essence, it's not my time. It's, It's not time for me to do anything like that. But she knows nothing's impossible for God. And he delivers stone jars full of excellent wine. It must have resonated through her mind as she she hears about, I don't think she was traveling with Jesus much, but she hears about all of the miracles he's doing. Whether it be feeding 5,000, or walking on water, stopping storms or healing the lepers. Nothing is impossible with God. It must have resonated in her mind when she went to Passover and she's in Jerusalem and she hears that her son has been taken and convicted and sentenced And so she, along with a few other women, and just one of the apostles, John, go out there to watch her son die. And maybe she thought to herself, maybe the house is going to fail now. Maybe it's all going to come crumbling down. But that's not what happened. Because destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it again. And on the third day, Mary gets to see her son resurrected. She gets to see that nothing is impossible with God. It's God's building a bigger house. A house that will include not only her family... But one of the great joys of being a Christian is it's our family. We have been adopted into the family. We are part of the family. We have joined this family. She is our great Aunt Mary. You know, our great Aunt Mary. Maybe maybe more than one great. She's part of our family and we're part of that family because we've been adopted into this family and there is nothing impossible 
with God. Because when the Lord decides to build something, it's not made out of cedar or stone or shiplap, but it's made out of God's people, the body of Christ, with him being the head. And so this week, we remember how the Lord continues his building project as he brings into the world the builder of our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We speak the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we have quite a few of them. We pray for Eddie Sincerny, who's been diagnosed with COVID, but is at home and doing reasonably well. Also for Cindy and Craig Treadway, who are uh, recuperating now from it. For Melissa Stamps' uh, uh, second grandson, to get it, Lucas Stamps, uh, his, his older brother Ivan has already gone through it and is doing all right. We pray for um, uh, the family of Kay Pig, uh, a family friend of uh, the uh, Drew Williams family who passed away, uh, not from COVID, but passed away this week. Also for Helen Newman and her family, her aunt uh, Dorothy passed away this week. We pray for Helen's father, who is now landed in the hospital with a heart attack, has some brain bleed, so we ask God to be with him. And we give thanks to, to today with uh, Christine Lundenberg, who got to go home from the nursing home and celebrate her 99th birthday yesterday. And we ask God's blessing on her. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Most High, you have favored us in the incarnation of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary. In everything, let it be to us according to your word. Give us faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you. And so to boldly pray in a godlike confidence. Lord, in your mercy. O Most High, you have revealed in Christ Jesus the mystery kept secret for long ages, now made known to all nations through the prophetic and apostolic scriptures. According to your eternal command, give us faithful preachers of your gospel to bring about the obedience of faith. Bless all our pastors, missionaries, and leaders in Christ. Strengthen your church in every place. Lord, in your mercy. O Most High, hear our prayers on behalf of our nation its president, its leader, legislators and judges, and those newly elected to serve. Preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people. 
Give peace among the nations of the earth. And preserve us from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and rebellion, and from every evil. Lord, in your mercy. O Most High, grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. Look with compassion on the lonely, the depressed, and the despairing. Give healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious and dying. Especially pray for Lucas Stamps, Cindy and Craig Treadway, Eddie Sincerny, and the families of uh, Dorothy Guttery and uh, Kay Pig. We also pray for Billy, um, Billy Lauderdale, the father of Helen Newman. Comfort all those who mourn with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Most High, we give thanks to you for all the blessings of life which you give us. Particularly, we give thanks for the blessings you have given to Christine now for 99 years. Lord, we ask you to continue to watch over and keep her. While she will tell you she is ready to come to you, you have decided to keep her here. So bless her and keep her in the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. O Most High, grant all who receive your Son's holy body and precious blood may do so in repentance and faith and true unity of true confession. Work in us this Christmas a love and desire for your blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. And O Most High, we give thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death he opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that, as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give thanks it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Savior, Jesus Christ, even unto death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Take and eat. This is the very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and drink. This is the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. body of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat this is the very body of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, bless and keep you, case. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Lord, bless and keep you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you.
so you can eat the body of Christ given for you. So you can eat the body of Christ given for you. So you can eat the body of Christ given for you. So you can eat the body of Christ given for you. So you can eat the body of Christ given for you. So you can eat the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. Lord bless and keep your shining. Christ given for you. Lord bless and keep you, Caitlin. So I can eat the body of Christ given for you. Take it. The body of Christ given for you. So I can eat the body of Christ given for you. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Just a couple of additional announcements. First of all, you can go on our website today and you'll be able to see the children's Christmas program. The children have uh, done a program uh, via recordings of the various lines and they've been mixed together into a really nice little program about uh, 14 minutes long. And you can go on to our website and click on it there and you can see it come up on your screen. Um, it was the best way we could figure out how to have a program, and it's very nice. You, you, ought, to, you ought to take a chance to look at that. Um, also, uh, you are uh, uh, reminded that uh, we still have a few of the uh, $25 uh, gift cards. Uh, if you have someone that is in need, please see me, and I will hap happily hand those out to you. So we just have a few of them left, but I, I, no, no sense me keeping them. So. Please, uh, please see me. Are there any other announcements? The Lord be with you. 